So we got multifaceted operation going on here. Uh, Joe and Tim are pulling that who's a what's it rotor in. We can get them on film putting that thing in. All they're gonna do is just set it right in the right in the crotch of that frame. I said crotch. Okay, it's only your ass crack, Joe. We all got one. Might as well hold that. All right. Without pinching your fingers, I would suggest. There you go. Well, that was easy. Wasn't that easy? Yeah. Cool. Now we should just go to the field. It'll work, right? All right. Yeah, it's done. We can we can actually shut the doors, leave for a half an hour, come back, and it'll repair itself. Did you did you know that? I did. And this is self healing. See, Crone has this awesome self healing operation. If you just, you know, leave it alone for a little while, it heals itself. You know, because that's just the way Crone is. You won't get that kind of service from a uh, Heston, Massey Ferguson, John Deere, or any other. Only with the Crone Big Pack 1290 HDP Self-Healing Baler. That's right. You throw enough money at it, she'll heal. Right, Joe? Right. Right. Just put the parts anywhere near it, and they'll be like a freaking Autobot. And it's done. Right? <laughs> Yeah. That's how it goes. Okay. No more dents, no more fuss, no more muss. Buy yourself a Crone Big Pack 1290 HDP One Lonely Farmer Edition. I think they should actually do a One Lonely Farmer Edition. I, I honestly do. They should say One Lonely Farmer Endorsed Crone Big Pack HDP 1290. Yep, so I've got these laid out so the little mechanical arms will, uh, you know, pick them up and put them all in together. And I think I'm going to leave this blaster, white lithium grease. I've taken a liking to this stuff. Uh, you know, even though I had some uh, uh, misgivings with the company, I still use their product. I find this to actually be the best white lithium spray grease I've ever had. And I've used uh, the WD-40 variety before. And no, I'm not being endorsed by these people. This is my own endorsement. So. Well, if you have a self-healing big pack baler, you uh, can use this stuff as well. And uh, as you can see, I've already sprayed it on here. I sprayed it on there so that the uh, computer and the, the, uh, the, the, the little robot can fix itself uh, with ease. So get yourself some blaster. You can get this at Tractor Supply. That's where I've been purchasing it from. Uh, it is not a gift. It was not a gift. It was not given to me by that company. But I actually like blaster. Uh, white lithium grease. There's some other products that I really like as well. And uh, I'll give them endorsements on my own. I don't need to be paid for that. You know, I know WD-40, they promised me the sun, the moon, and the stars. I did a couple of uh, Instagram things and even a uh, WD-40 uh, video. And the cocksuckers, and yes, I'm going to use the term cocksucker, they did not pay me one red cent. And I hate it when people rip me off for a service that I provided. So anyways, with that being said, I'm going to get back to work here because, as we all know, there's no such thing as a self-healing Big Pack 1290 HDP baler. That was just a joke for those of you that think that I was being serious. And yes, I'm sure there's a few of you out there that did think I was serious. I'm not that serious. Anyway, here we go. Uh, I've had enough help putting those things in, so I will get my ass in gear with the aid of white lithium grease from Blaster. And I'm going to slide that bad boy in there. I've already put this... Ugh. I've put that bearing on there, and I'm going to need Mr. Tim Potato. Hey, Tim, could you come over here and slide that thing in? I'm going to need you with a hammer on the tip of that shaft. On the tip of the shaft, I want you to smack it, like, right here. Okay. So, you know, gently. There's a one-pound hammer. It just needs to be gently tapped in, and then I'll be able to put the bearing on. So get over there, and I'll hand it to you.
So I got to abandon my project here on this baler because of this. It don't look right. So. <clears throat> Fortunately, I do have the right part number here for this, and, you know, it makes me happy that I have it, uh, but for the most part, it is wrong. As you can see, that, that hole diameter is much smaller on the new one as it is on the old one. Well, I can't put the old one on and just run it because A, it's hogged out, and B, it's worn out. But that is... What caused the shaft to break is the chain was ratcheting over top of this and causing that uh, that ratcheting noise and a big bunch of problems. So, oh, excuse me, I just drank a just drank some water. <laughs> Jeepers already! So this is the proximity switches. I got these. These are fine. I know what they are. Um, ugh. Yeah, so I'm kind of in a pickle. I spent a lot of money to have this stuff overnighted so that I would have it because we got sunshine and a lot of hay on the ground. And unfortunately, that one part has got me screwed up. I can't do anything. Uh, but we did start to put the things back together again. I've got uh, new bearings in the uh, in the rotor. Uh, we put the rotor in. As you can see, there's a couple of pick up. Ooh. I don't know what the hell that was, but they went flying. Uh, the pickup tines right there, see them? They actually have to pass through here. They have to pass through there. We put it on, and before you put the locking collar on and all, you really have to know exactly where uh, it needs to be within those slots. So it's real simple. You just put in a couple of tines, you run them through, get them centered, and then before you hit this locking collar, you move it back or back and forth, and would you look at that? They even put my name on that thing. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, before you lock the locking collar in place, you uh, get that thing centered. So we did put the locking collars on. Uh, Joseph and I locked them on. The new stub augers, they are both up in there. It's amazing the difference in the size. And this is where this sprocket is that is no good. So, see that stub, that stub auger is driven off of here, comes down and it drives that off of that double, uh, off of that double sprocket deal, okay? So, that goes on there and then it comes down from there and it drives that and then this, the second sprocket comes down and that drives the pickup. So, this needs to be pretty doggone heavy. And there's no part number on the new piece, so I think somebody just grabbed it and gave me the wrong one. And that's kind of sad, but it is what it is. And that's just that. So this piece here that was bent, the shaft was bent, I just straightened it out. And I have it. Oh, somebody tighten it up. No? No. Oh, it shouldn't be that tight. Uh, I did straighten it out, and now I just have to put the, uh, the spacers in the new uh, locking ring on there or the new uh, who's a what's it that goes on there it's gonna be these are the little guys here I think I have I better have a new one because I ordered them and you know it's I, I got a lot of wrong parts with this thing or not all the parts that I needed and obviously in all as obvious as it can be I don't have the right ones they did not give me the right damn ones so, you know, when you're dealing with shit like this, it's kind of annoying me. Because I got a lot of money. $1,600 in overnight delivery charges. Yes, 
I'm not going to pull punches on you. I need this machine. $1,600 isn't a lot of money when there's sunshine and a bunch of uh, a bunch of hay on the ground. You know, if it gets wet, and once it gets wet and the wax comes off of the hay, I hurt my knee, and the wax comes off the hay, it starts to deteriorate. So every time it gets wet and starts to dry out again, you lose hundreds and hundreds of pounds. So if you lose over the couple hundred acres or 300 acres that I've got laying on the ground right now, if you lose 10% of 300 acres, uh, that's 30 acres worth, 30 acres, that's 60 tons, that's two loads. That's, and, and I'm not joking, that's how this works, you know. It, it, it turns to dust, it turns to, uh, to vapor, <laughs> gas, as the microbes uh, eat it and break it down. It is eaten up and uh, released into the atmosphere uh, as it breaks down the BTUs and all that other neat stuff that it, I'm probably butchering the analogy of it but whatever it is it is uh, so yeah $1600 to get it here overnight so I could bail today wouldn't have been too bad but fortunately I have two bailers and it's gonna take me a lot longer and we are looking at showers today so I may as well shut my trap and get moving because Joe just left to go rake because we have the sunshine that's necessary to get this shit dry enough to get it in the bale. But the, the problem is the, soon, the minute the sun goes down, the, because the dew point is so high, uh, it starts to, uh, it starts to, uh, what do you call it? Um, it's, the dew starts to set on it right away and then, here he comes, Stackmaster Tim. That's how that thing goes. <laughs> so this is for the people that have been wondering about the uh, Auto Align stack wagon and its abilities. Uh, it is quite a capable machine. He moves too fucking slow though, excuse the language. Um, if it were me running that machine, I'd be running. I'd be running it. I wouldn't be, you know, lollygagging like he is. And he's pretty good at lollygagging. Uh, he's doing a good job though, I mean I can't complain too much, but I ran against two balers the other day with that machine and I was only 15 minutes, 20 minutes behind them and they were running in material that was every bit as thick and heavy as what this is and as you can tell it's killing my engine. This tractor doesn't have enough horsepower to run like the uh, 8530 does. Yep. But these bales are coming in at 13.29. I don't have them too heavy because the baling twine that I'm using is only a uh, uh, a 500 knot strength baling twine. Which, what do you want me to do? You know, you just got to do what you got to do. Uh, yeah, he's doing all right. Here he goes. Hopefully you'll see him hit that bale. Nope, not gonna see him hit that bale. the bale and it bounces in and hopefully we can get him on that one without him ruining my windrow. The windows are dirty. We are bailing at seven and a half miles per hour. I would be going faster if I had a higher horsepower tractor. And here he goes, here he goes, here he goes. There it is. Here comes the paddle it back and you're not getting a very good video of this. So what I'll do is uh, next go around, the next go around that he comes by, I'll stop and I'll videotape the whole thing. I need more horsepower, I need a bigger tractor. I need to go to England and pick up an 8530 over there. That's what I need, another 8530. Uh, we'll see what happens this, uh, this fall when I get all my material made. I do need another tractor. Just saying. Oh, there he comes. Here he comes. Let's see if he comes into frame there. Here he comes. He's got it. Up, up, and away. And that 
that's it, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll push that back. Boom. Resqueeze it. And that thing is all on a computer. It resets everything back to a line behind the 7810. And now, if it were me, I'd be shifting gears and gassing her up to go. But uh, I'm not doing that. And that 7810 looks awesome with 7, 710 70R38s on it. That's just. That just made that tractor so much better with those tires all the way around. There's 630s, I think, on the front, or 628s on the front. Um, looks like we got some rain coming, too. So, anyway, I'll shut it off, and then when he comes back, I'll, I'll show you what he's doing. It is not. Oh, it has them. Oh, it has them? See that? Yeah. Well, they may be disconnected. See how he's that ring comes off? Yeah. If it comes off. Nope, that thing ain't coming off. torch. Okay, okay. My mustache is a bit crooked. Anyways, uh, yeah, that last little bit, um, Joseph had left the field from raking and he wanted to put brakes on his truck and they weren't the normal take your wheel off and the rotor comes off job. It was a, they're a hub. It was the whole hub and everything. So I had to give him a hand and uh, taught him a few things. And we didn't get home. I didn't get home until after 11. Maybe it was 11.30 last night. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the stack wagon and everything else that goes on there. Self-healing balers are awesome too, by the way.